Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, identity, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And it's once again, it's a Monday, and this is October 7th, 2019. This is Clyde J. Kell, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast. This is episode 16. I'm here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. It's good to have you folks join me here so I don't sit here like a uh, lonely fool talking to myself on the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you you and Constance Diane joining me. Um, this month is kind of exciting. We've got some uh, announcements and some advancements in our careers and things that have taken place, and I'm going to let Constance lead the way. Constance, what's your big news for October? What's coming up here for you in October? Well, in 10 days, I will be leaving for setup day in uh, Oklahoma City for the Affair of the Heart show. And it will go on on uh, the 17th, oh, 18th, 19th, and the 20th. So come and see me. <laughs> yeah, anybody's, uh, for any of our listeners in the Oklahoma City area, come by the uh, Affair of the Heart. It's at the fairgrounds, right, in, the, in Oklahoma City. Yes, I'll be in the Bennett Building, and my booth number is uh, 617. There you go. Come by and say uh, hello to Clausen. Say hi. And look at her, <laughs> look at her fantastic uh, handmade, unique jewelry. Diane, you said you have an, an announcement. Yeah, I got notified today that I got um, one of my paintings, Uprising, was selected as part of the, of the um, Fab 15 which is the jewelry, um, their favorites of the entries for the August um, Bold Brush Painting Competition. So that was kind of exciting. That's the second time I've gotten that, so in less, over the last three months, so that's pretty Yeah, this cool. is the <laughs> second painting, right? That's uh, yeah. that. Yeah. That is fantastic. Pretty, yeah. Out of thousands, literally thousands yeah. of entries, in, <laughs> uh, to, to be in the top 15%, that's... Uh, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yep. I'm happy about it. <laughs> I, enter, I enter a painting in that contest every month since, uh, I think, July. And, you know, it's, it, of course, it didn't cost me anything, so it's just a way of getting publicity. But, uh, wow, if I ever got to <laughs> got the top 15%, you guys wouldn't – I wouldn't shut up. You'd never <laughs> – <laughs> that's exciting. Well, yeah. I've got something going on. I made it. I don't know if I made an announcement before on this, but uh, my very first actual brick and mortar 
gallery exhibition. It's in Zurich, Switzerland. And before you guys think, wow, Clyde had a whole lot of money to send his art to Switzerland. This is cool. This is, this is the way you do art exhibitions in the 21st century. This gallery, it's a real small gallery. It's called the uh, Art Box Gallery in Zurich, Switzerland. And they have these 55-inch uh, monitors set up inside their gallery, along with the regular artwork that they have displayed on the walls. And I had to send one image of my work in high resolution, and then they will display that on the monitors, of course, along with other member, member artists. And they, they offer this for uh, emerging artists, an opportunity to uh, have your artwork actually exhibited to an international audience. So that exhibition is going on uh, the entire month of October. And it's in the, if you go to www.theartboxgallery.com, you can uh, see the gallery. They haven't updated their site with, the, with this current exhibition, but you can at least uh, get the address of where it's at in Zurich. So if there's any of our, I know we have a worldwide listener base, so any, any of the listeners, please, if you're in Zurich, Switzerland, stop by the gallery. They're open Monday through Friday from uh, 10 a.m. to uh, 6 p.m., and I think Saturday is 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and uh, stop by the gallery and take a snapshot of my images. I, I submitted the... Uh, called the uh, ripe for picking uh, uh, peach uh, image and I'm pretty excited about that all right let's move on the uh, recommended videos for uh, this week was a excellent video with Stefan Bauman and uh, talked about uh, niche marketing Diane uh, I'll let you lead the conversation on that <laughs> um, yeah he was talking about how to or in this day and age, niches are kind of the thing to do. And I guess it's been that way probably for a long time, actually. Um, so he was talking about how to figure out what niche you might be in and um, where you would like to be yourself as a painter. And he, he talks about it's like asking yourself, you know, if you had to paint one thing for the rest of your life and you couldn't paint anything else, or creating the other kind of work, anything else, um, what would it be of? And I know I've kind of asked myself that a few times throughout my life, I guess, but it, I always come back to nature, and that's, I'm, I'm always doing something with nature. So that's kind of my, where I'm at. But um, what about you guys? Where do you see yourselves? <laughs> yeah, Constance, did you get any thoughts on, on that niche marketing? Um, I like painting animals. Um, I take pictures of cows a lot <laughs> lately because I have them now, but, um, I used to do paint people's pets for them like, like you a lot, um, uh, for a while. And, um, I always took pictures of animals. You know, when I see a nice mule somewhere, I would take a picture of it and I used to have some mules. So I've always liked animals. And I'd like seascapes. I've always, and I've painted them a lot for a while, but I'm not close to the, the beach anymore, so I can't take any more seascapes. Well, you're actually, but, kind of, you're, you're kind of doing a little bit of a niche, a niche marketing with your jewelry. You know, isn't that kind of a bit of a yeah. niche? Yeah. Yeah, it is a niche. Yeah. I think yeah. jewelry is a niche. And the niche is mainly wire wrapping. And people like my wire wrapping. And I've tried to stray from the niche doing uh, silversmithing. And I like the silversmithing, but everybody likes my wire wrapping so much that I've kind of gone back to it a little bit. So, um, yeah. But I also was an artist, a painter first. Yeah. So I, mean, I really missed that side of my art and want to go back to it really bad. And I like pastel painting a lot. When I did the animals, the painting animals, that's mainly what I painted the animals in was the pastels. I like doing it, the pastels, the animals, because it makes them, to me, seem more vibrant because of their fur, I guess. 
I like I said when I I've done a few animals. Animals is kind of hard. You know that fur is it's really nice when you get it right, but it, it's kind of hard. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah, yeah. I imagine it is harder. I've done some uh, oil paintings with animals, but to me, to get the fur, it's a lot easier with the pastels. But when you do get it, when it does come out just right, it's uh, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. I've thought about this niche marketing quite a bit. I really have. And I got mixed feelings on it. I yeah, If you want to branch out into other areas of work, if you get hung up in a niche, it's well, not a good thing. My problem. Like I came up with, all, uh, you know, a, a professional, you know, professional coach, you know, recommended the, uh, you know, since I have my internet radio station, and my passion with the old time radio and everything. He said, you, should, you know, and I've always wanted to be able to combine the uh you know the art with that you know and i came up with my pulp radio art series and i was excited for the beginning but then after a while i completely i just kind of lost interest and i really have to force myself to uh to to uh do that you know and i couldn't see myself like when stephen bauman in his video asked a question think of something you want to do for the rest of your life well that's not i don't want to do that for the rest of my life <laughs> And then I think about, okay, I've been doing some uh, recently. I got all excited with acrylics because I got some new acrylic paints. I'm kind of like the, what's the word I want to use? It's like when a new shiny object comes up, I chase after it. You know? I think that's part of um, because you haven't been painting all that long. Like, yeah. you know, you're still exploring and you're still trying to figure out what kind of artist you are and you haven't really narrowed that down specifically yet. Yeah. So I think that it's something that comes with time. I mean, I've, I mean, I think back to my career and I can remember doing animals and nature and stuff when I was little, like that was like my main thing. I always did pictures of landscapes and animals and all the nature stuff. I can't remember ever doing anything else. <laughs> but I did some, like when I was in college, I did some abstracts and I did some other stuff that's not related to that at all. But it was more because the um, I was exploring the materials that I was learning how to use or, you know, it was more of like a direction that the teacher wanted us to go in or something, you know, to explore. So I yeah. spent a lot of years just exploring different materials and different um, approaches. So my um uh ideas evolved over t you know years like time a lot of time so and i think you're still sort of in the beginnings of that i don't think you're or maybe you're you know you're into it a little bit more than that but if you were going to an art school and you were taking classes like if you they would they would introduce you to all these different mm -hmm. tools and things and you yeah. would get to explore them all so that would be part of your repertoire of finding out about the different mediums which is good because then you can use them in combination you know with each other in the end you might end up using them to layer you know mixed media pieces and stuff which is cool you know yeah i uh yeah because you both know you know know me that uh i've only been yeah, I've been an artist my whole life, but I've only been really actively, consciously producing work on a regular basis for like the past three years. In mm -hmm. fact, so interesting. I had a uh, conversation with my mother, you know, last week, and she brought up something that it really, really made me feel good. My family, all my cousins and, and I guess brothers. They know, they've known I've been an artist my whole life, but they've only recently have finally accepted that, hey, he's gone professional. Because they've seen, started seeing the work that I'm doing. She said they've been calling and telling said, what is Clyde doing? Look at that. Where did, where did he learn how to do that? And everything. You know, my mother says, I don't know. He didn't get it from me, but he's always been an artist. <laughs> You know, and she was kind of like defending me in a, in a sense, you know, she said, yeah, but you said your cousins are, are just like, they're amazing. And, and she's, and I, cause I told her how much, you know, I said, I've done well over 400 
pieces, you know, of work now. And when, from the time when I was uh, 12, 13 years old, maybe I only did maybe I could count maybe 15 pieces total. <laughs> so, so my, my product, my production has, has really increased, you know, when I decided to uh, pursue a professional career as an artist, not just as a hobby to do something every once in a while. This is what I'm finding. Why I have mixed feelings about niche marketing, because I'm not sure where my niche is at. I'll, I'll give you well, the, the thing is you, you want to explore all that stuff because you don't know like what, what's going to affect how things are going to get affected by the things you come across. So the more things you can explore and um, look into and, and see if it's resonates with you, the better off you are because then you can apply those things to whatever medium you end up with. Yeah. So you really do want to experiment with a lot of things. And you, it doesn't it doesn't say that you can't do that. Like if you pick, pick a niche, like it doesn't mean that you can't go off and do something else some, once in a while or, you know, just yeah. change your direction yeah. all of a sudden. I mean, it's well, not yeah. saying you can't do that. but Like when Stephen Bauman, he used, he used the example of uh, Thomas Kincaid because, you know, he was, a, he was a colleague of Thomas Kincaid. And I was really kind of surprised in the video when he said, yeah, Thomas Kincaid, you know, he, 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 uh, he, he was a phenomenal artist, very well skilled, could do anything, but he did mostly these cottages and, and uh, uh, sceneries that were kind of like storybook type. And then, but it drove him crazy. And that kind of made me laugh. I said, yeah, he's right. Because then later on in his life, he started having problems, you know, because he, mm-hmm. he wanted to do other work, but he had created this company and this company sold these works of cottages and expected him. To, he had to produce, you know, the, so many of these paintings with cottages and and right. storybook scenery. And if he didn't do that, then his, you know, his company would that he had created would, you know, would 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 go bankrupt. And as a result, he didn't have time to explore and do other things which he wanted to do. I myself don't want to get myself into that kind of a trap. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get, you know. Well, it's a choice. I don't think, um, he probably didn't think long term, like enough when he was setting it up, when it was first getting started. Cause you're, I mean, a lot of artists fall into that trap. I think they, they start doing something and it starts selling and they're like, Oh, you know, Oh boy, you know, I'm finally making some money at my yeah. artwork. But then so they're usually starving when it starts. Yeah. You know, so like, then you're right. like, yes, I'm making but then you, money, you kind of get stuck in that, but I don't think you have to stay in it. I mean, it, like he, he got so big that he had so many people depending on him for income and, and, you know, all the different galleries he had and people working for him and everything that, it was it was would have been really hard for him to change that because he had people depending on him, yeah, you know, for their livelihoods. So, I, but I think he probably could have if he really um, wanted to. He had so many people following him. I think he could have um, done it gradually, and people would have followed him anyway. Yeah, because yeah. they liked what he you know, liked his philosophy or liked his his what they call their his why, you know his. Um, the reason for painting so i think yeah. they would have followed him anyhow yeah exactly i, I think so they, yeah he just needed to give him a chance to, to yeah they, if he had done it gradually him. i think it would have worked if he like abruptly and all of a sudden started painting something totally different i think that would have been hard for people to swallow but i have my artwork on spread out on six different sites across the internet yes. where my art can be can appear on apparel and home decor and prints and whatnot now, of those six sites, five of them, I've sold at least one, one piece of art. Um, what was it? Uh, Monday, I sold on one of the sites, on the Society Six sites. Uh, someone bought an 18 by 24 inch poster of a, a sailboat that I did, which was a commission work. Then on my Zazzle.com site yesterday, <laughs> Someone ordered the temporary tattoos because I put up because they offer a, a temporary tattoo. So I, I made several temporary tattoo sheets of I used the, my beta fish, you know, my art doodle beta fish I did did last year. 
Mm-hmm. So I, put about, I put six of those into like the little tattoos and someone ordered that. I was like, Oh my God. So mm-hmm. that's cool. These things that are selling, I have no idea that this, when I created these and put these up, that these would sell, you know, yeah, but the thing is you don't want to, um, I mean, it's nice that you're selling stuff and it doesn't mean that you can't do anything else because those things are selling. I mean, you're tempted to just keep doing that. You know, the things that are selling because they're selling. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you can't do something else too, or in addition to it. Yeah. But that's what, but you know, and Stefan talked about, you know, he said how to identify your niche market. I can't identify one now because I've sold pulp radio art stuff. I've sold dinosaurs. I've sold fish. I've sold uh, flowers. You can't just. You don't want to just base it on what's been selling, though. It's it's what's important to you, not what is important to other people. That's what, what he's saying. Look th- look through your phone. What do you take pictures of, or what do you collect pictures of? Then that's probably what your niche is. You know, kind of find out what your interest is. That's what your niche should be. And then, like, Not. before we started recording, I also, I'm becoming a dead pet artist, you know? <laughs> I've got my eighth commission. I don't know that that should be your niece. <laughs> received my eighth commission to do somebody's cat that passed away. And this is, like, eight. <laughs> now, these are intentional, but, you know, I, and I'm not, hey, I'm not complaining. I am not, this is good money, but... <laughs> Work is work. <laughs> but in trying to identify a niche, that's where I run into problems, you know, trying to identify my niche. Where is, what is my niche? Yeah. <laughs> well, like, like, uh, Stephen said, look through your phone. What do you collect or your computer? What do you collect pictures of? Yeah. I have landscape. I have multiple interests, you know, and that's the thing for me personally and like I, you, you both have known me long enough, so you, you can see where I'm going through. I, I'm still in the exploring stage. I'm still, you know, so maybe I shouldn't uh, uh, create all this anxiety for finding a niche. I, 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 <laughs> I would not yet. No, yeah. if you don't know what it is yet, then you just don't know. Exactly. You I know, mine, mine is. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with doing a bunch of different taking, things. I love taking photographs of sunsets and landscapes and I don't have, I don't do great jobs of taking them yet, but I do like taking them and collecting them. I mean, when you look through my phone, mainly that's what my photographs are of the landscapes, taking pictures of the landscapes around here, just the sunsets, the whatever, you know, or the, or the animals here, you know, but yeah, I got, you know, flowers and sunset scapes and, and city, city sca- I mean, just, <laughs> it's a wide variety. I could care less about cities. You know, <laughs> those cityscapes just blow my mind. <laughs> like, uh-uh, I, I moved out here to get away from the city. <laughs> but it might not be um, a specific topic like that. It might be, like you do, you've done older um, buildings, you've done older cars and trains and like older and your old time radio st- it's all older mm-hmm. stuff like rusty cars and stuff it's more um, yeah oh, about that, that might yeah. be that might be your niche rather than a specific yeah yeah you're telling me you yeah. have to look at it in, from different directions like yeah I, exactly i forgot completely forgot about you know my rusty cars i have you yeah. have done a lot of my, old rusty cars and then the, the boats that are sitting all dilapidated yeah. on the beach and stuff. Yeah. Thank you. I completely forgot about that. Yeah. Thank you, Diane. Wow. You guys pay attention to my artwork. How about <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> you might have a niche and I didn't didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> you like to do those. Yeah, I do. They do they, they give me a great deal of enjoyment you know, working on those, you know, I have done, in fact, that reminds me, I haven't done one in a while. I may end up doing one this week. Yeah. <laughs> you did the car. Wait, you, what else did you do? You did the cars that were the trucks and the cars and then the, you did some boats too, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. The old boats. Yeah. I haven't done as many boats as I'd like, and like, but the cars, yeah, I've got what, I think I got 12, maybe 12 or 13, something like that. Maybe 14. Mm-hmm. 
what would happen? I'll come across a picture of a, of an, an old car, you know, and it strike me a certain way and it jogs memories. These things, because there's not a single, like we've talked about this before where every, every artist puts a bit, a bit of themselves in their, into their work. There is not a single piece of artwork, not a single thing that I do that I don't uh, have some kind of a personal connection to it. It jogs a memory of something in my past life. You know, and uh, yeah, well, that's true, that, and that might be your niche. That's like you know, it doesn't have to be a specific thing like that, it can be a, an emotional response, or it doesn't, you know, it's it, you don't have to look at it so linear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm creating a lot of anxiety for myself, it's unnecessary. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, what was the uh, – did, did I recommend a, uh, a Sergio Gomez video or – Yeah, yeah I'm trying to remember what he about. talked about. What about um, the little mini series for the holidays? Oh, yeah. Oh, he was doing the, the 41 um, – that's the small 12, 10 by 10s or 12 by 12s, whatever they were. Yeah. yeah. For 41 winners, that's what he did. Yeah, something like yeah. that. And it, which I think uh, – the reason why I included that it kind of falls in line with this niche, you know, niche marketing because his, at his, I'd say his, his focus was of doing those small artwork or small works for the holidays is to then attract people to want to buy the larger, more expensive pieces. So at least to introduce himself to people who may not have seen his work before was, was, a, I thought was a, was a, was a good idea you know, in, in a sense, because uh, uh, some of our larger pieces, you know, may be more expensive and uh, folks who may like our work, but they don't quite have the budget, you know, to pay, you know, thousand dollars, two thousand dollars or whatever, you know, but uh, something that's a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, they would be willing to, you know, they could handle that. Yeah. yeah, and even for this time of year with, with uh, holidays coming up there, you know, most people can spend that kind of money for a gift for someone or, you know, even if they're not buying it for themselves. <clears throat> so they, it's a little more affordable. <laughs> even if you do like a little five by fives or something like that, the smaller one, four by sixes or some. And it's a way for people to obtain original art, you know, and get, like I said, mm -hmm. give, give original art as a gift, you know, I think that was just, but, uh, it's the secondary, like Sergio's emphasis, the secondary is that uh, it will introduce people to your artwork. You know, I said, well, if they like that, well, maybe, you know, okay, I also do this kind of work. These are a little bit larger, but, you know, and, and I, I like his approach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a good, uh, good um, idea. Yeah. I think having a topic or a theme – for a series you do like that is real is good marketing too like because you can get people excited about you know what the next one's going to be you know coming out mm -hmm. yeah you're doing something like that now aren't you diane with your little small with your with your small yeah i've been doing a small series a series of small uh ocean paintings so they're coming out soon <laughs> when i get them all finished i love seascapes <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> When are you going to make the big announcement when they're going to be made available and how we can get, get our hands? I'm not sure when. I, I want to get them all complete first. And since they're oil paintings, I have to kind of get them done and then wait for them to dry before I want to put them out because then I can't – I won't be able to ship them right away. So I have to wait a little while. I have to wait until they dry and then kind of do it. So I was going to say – I'm not exactly sure when that will happen. I mean, here we are. We're starting the second week of October. And, yeah. yeah, I wasn't really planning on doing them specifically for the holiday time. So I'm not really worried about trying to get them done before Christmas or anything. But I don't, um, I'll don't. i just have to get them done when I get them done and then do it. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have a timeline. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've been looking forward to help, you know, with our, with our podcast here to give you a little bit of publicity, you know, and help you uh, – help you know oh, i'll let you know <laughs> make a, you know, where we might, might be able to make a uh you know a bit of a uh like an offer or premium or something to our special to our listeners you see what i'm saying you know? yeah yeah 
Yeah. In fact, that's something all three of us can do. I, I've had in my mind, I said, God, why don't we take advantage? Because we're starting to gain quite a few uh, listeners. I don't know if they're just artists or who they are, but we're getting numbers that are listening to our podcast. You know, so I'm seeing the stats. That's great. And, uh, you know, we, uh, there's always an open invitation to, if you are an artist that are listening to this, please send me an email. If you would like to appear, if you've got a special event, an exhibition or something coming up, you'd like to uh, talk about send me an email. And we'll be glad to have you. We'll send you the details of how to join us. And uh, we'll be glad to let you uh, just talk your way. Uh, yes, we meet in video so we can see each other, but the podcast is recorded audio only, so you don't have to worry. Don't be shy, you know. <laughs> we don't bite. It'd just be the three of us here, but uh, we'll uh, get your voice out there and, uh, you know, let the – and you don't have to be, you know, if you just want to come in for one time, you know, visit. Please, open invitation, cjkl at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkl at sign mystery-otr.com. I'm just putting the subject there, uh, guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, and I will certainly get back to you, and we'll line you up, set, set, set a date up, and uh, I'll send you the technical details and how to, uh, how to get involved. Okay, we're coming up to almost uh, the end of this episode, this episode 16 for October the 7th, 2019. Um, want to offer a tip of the week? Anybody want to do that? No. Look at this shake my hands. No, no, no. Okay, I tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll throw, throw this out there. This is off the top of my head. And it's more for me. Of what you two were telling me, don't create a bunch of anxiety for yourself because you don't have a niche or because your art doesn't fall into one category or another. Just continue to work and continue to improve the craft and the niche will come about. That's my tip. And it's more for me, but I'm sure there's other listeners, especially artist listeners who, uh, yeah, uh, probably think that way, right? Yeah, <laughs> <I'm> sure. <laughs> okay. This is Clyde J. Kale, and you have been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 16 for October the 7th, 2019. And I've been here with uh, Diane and Constance, and bye-bye, Diane. Bye-bye, Constance. Bye, Clyde. Bye, Constance. Bye, bye everyone. Bye-bye, bye, everybody. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constant Drosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constant Bronzan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com this podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.